G'day guys, welcome back. Seeing as it's three weeks to Christmas and I've put a challenge on my Facebook group to do a Christmas haul using greens and reds, black and white. I thought I'd better put my money where my mouth is and do a Christmas haul for you. Now I've just made up these paints and there's a few bubbles in them so I'm just going to pop those bubbles with my little heat gun here, just in the top, just a little guy. Just pop a few of the bubbles that are sitting on top and hopefully it'll be alright. haven't got much time so I didn't have time to wait for the bubbles to dissipate. Just checking my consistencies here. Uh, white fills a little on the thick side. Let's put a few drops in there of water. I just use tap water, I don't worry about that. So my mix today is the one that I've been using lately. It is 65% Elmer's glue all, not the school glue. School glue, once it's dried, you can wipe it over with the cloth and the paint will come off. With the glue all, if you wipe it over with the wet cloth, the paint stays on. So I think that's the main difference. Uh, the glue all, uh, the paint stays on, which is a good thing if you want to wash your surface and get the oil off, go with the glue all. Um, if you can't get glue all, look, any white PVA craft glue will do. I've tried a few. And uh, I'm happy with all of them. I just thought I'd try the glue oil because that's what everyone in the States uses and I thought I'll give it a go. So I did. Um, now, and I just, as I said, 65-35 glue and water and I just put it into this squeezy bottle so it's easy to pour out of. And then my ratio is 50% pouring medium to 50% paint. The red paint had to have a little bit more water put into it. It was quite... Thick, same with the green. This green here was quite thin, so I've added a little bit of extra paint. So you can't just say 50 50 pouring medium and paint, it depends on each colour. And some colours are thick, some colours are thin. So just use um, your sense, I guess, and change them accordingly so that they're all the same. And for cells today, 100% silicone oil. I don't think it matters what brand you get, just get 100% silicone oil. And these cups have got 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint, so that's 100 grams. So I'm going to do three drops in each, except for the black. One, two, three. Oh, that one went on the side. One, two, three. You've got to be careful not to squeeze these bottles too much. I'm only applying a tiny little bit of pressure, otherwise I'll get a huge stream of oil and I don't want that. Now, two or three drops in each cup is plenty. Give that a good stir in. My two whites do feel a little bit thicker still. I think they'll be okay though once the paint's all layered. Okay, let's get to layering. Um, I'll tell you quickly about the, what colours I've got and I'll show you the bottles later. So I've got two blacks, two whites, a light green, a dark green, a light red and a dark red. And as you can see, I've separated each of my colours with either black or white. This green's got white on either side. The orange, I don't mind if it touches the white because it's not going to give me pink. So that is separated by black and white. And then this red oh, and this red here, it's going to be separated between that black and then this black up here again. So I wanted to keep the white away from the red, obviously, because I don't want pink. So five cups. So I need just a little bit of paint in each because I need to do two rows or two layers of paint. I actually did, I made up 60 grams of pouring medium and 60 grams of paint in each of these, just in the black, just so I could have a little bit of extra black to do my corners. 
Let's drizzle this in. My last pour I did with my metallics, I didn't drizzle them in, I poured them in from the side. And I don't know if it was that or whether it was just because they were metallics, but I didn't get as many multicolored cells. So whether that was the reason, not sure. Because when I poured them in, I only had like half the surface was covered in, in each layer of paint. I don't know if you can understand what I mean by that, but maybe that's got to do with it. I'm not sure. So I've kept my greens away from my reds because green and red don't really play nice together. So that's why I've kept the greens up this end, the reds up the other end and separated them either by black or by white. And hopefully that will be enough to give me a nice pour. Not too muddy, because these colors can go muddy, can't they? If you've tried red and green together, that does happen. Primary colors together are often not a good mix. So this red has been sandwiched by the two blacks. So hopefully we'll get some nice red cells with black rings or maybe red uh, black cells with red rings. Wait and see what happens. Alright, so that's that black gone. I'm going to have to save some black from my last cup to do the corners. Let's just pop a bit on now so I don't use it all up. Join it up there, eh? Why not? These edges are always the edges that get missed. I haven't done that before, I've gone right across, so maybe I will in future. Do a little bit on the corner and then continue it all the way down. Just to help the paint flow easily over this edge. Because I don't like tilting too much left and right, as you've noticed. I prefer just to go up and down, not so much left to right because I like to keep my linear patterns when I'm doing my flip and drags. Okay, that's covered it. If I need to do the sides, I can pick up some extra paint off the puppy pedal pads or I can make some up off camera afterwards and, and do some more. So let's continue with these. So I've got the green on the black now. Green still feels a little bit thinner. That's okay. If they're a touch thicker or a touch thinner, it won't matter once all the paints are in the cup together. It's just that if all your paints are too thin or all your paints are too thick, that's when you'll have a problem. It's tricky getting your consistency right. I have done a couple of videos on paint consistency, so if you're still struggling, have a look at them. I've done one where you count the, the stream of the paint that leaves the stick into the cup and I've shown you how long it takes before that paint stream breaks. So that's a good idea as to how thick your paint needs to be, how long it actually takes before the paint stream breaks. And then I've done another one where I've put paint on there and then put a line through it and you can see how long it takes before the paint sort of creeps back together. So all these little tips that will help you work out the right consistency for your pour. Holidays are coming up. We're going to sit in front of YouTube and watch videos, aren't we? Well, some of us will. I still have to work. I will have uh, the Monday before Christmas off. 
I think I might actually take that whole week off because Christmas is on a Tuesday this week, isn't it? So Tuesday, Wednesday, public holidays in Australia. Uh, so I'll probably take the Monday off. Tuesday, Wednesday's holiday. And I may go back for the Thursday, not sure. That one's got quite a lot of paint in it. I won't put too much in that. These two on the end need a little bit more. I'll just pop a bit more in those. But hopefully, with the holiday season coming, we can all pour more. Have some time off with family and friends, get some pouring done. All right, that's the white gone. So I've got a warm red and a cool red. This is the warm red. It's slightly lighter, more of an orangey shade. And then the cool red is the other one. A little bit darker. Global don't have a very dark red. I wish they would. I wish they'd do a burgundy. That would be lovely. I've tried making a burgundy, putting a little black in my red, but it's not attractive colour. So hopefully they can do a burgundy for us one day. So this is the cool red. I think it throws a little bit of pink, personally. Um, no, I was supposed to put black in there next, wasn't I? Can't remember. Yes, I was supposed to put black next. But I moved my black because I used it on the corners. So. Let's put some black between the two reds and just separate them a bit. When I'm pouring, I do prefer to use one brand of paint at a time. I know lots of people mix them up, but for me, just getting the consistency right, I prefer to use a pour doing all global paints or all Liquitex Basics paints. That way I can mix up my ratios the same. And I know that my paints are all going to be relatively similar in consistency because if I start putting Liquitex Basics in one cup, Global in another cup, Artist Loft in another cup, I find that I just can't keep the consistency right and I don't end up with the results that I want. So I pick a brand and do the whole pour in that brand. Um, I'm just gonna put that one in the middle because that hasn't got black between the red and the orange, just so that it's, if you have to have one that's somewhere, that's a little bit different, might as well pop it in the middle, hey? Okay, let's flip these babies over. my middle crossbar so I'll make sure that one's in the middle take these up to the top as high as they'll go and throw my empty cups and my sticks away there we go I like a nice clean area the other thing that I did do before I started was just spray my empty cups with my silicone spray just lightly and then I wipe them with the paper towel just to get the excess out it helps the paint to release from the cups just give it a minute and they look pretty the ratio of one to one paint with pouring medium gives me a, a much brighter finish with my other mix where I was doing three two one quarter I'd use three parts of that to one part of paint so obviously the paint is more diluted and I don't get as good effect with it so when you're using high ratio of paints you do get a really nice bright contrast and you can see that there you see the little green blob sitting in the black bit of an orange ring there the red 
And a thicker paint helps too to keep your colours together and not melting into each other as much. So they're just sitting there, they're not moving. Okay, let's do this. Christmas pour, here we come. Let's hope it works. Since I've asked all these people on the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group to do this, I'd better be able to do it. Number one. Number two. That didn't go down as far as it should have. Let's pop a little bit more paint just here for it. Okay. Oh, I was going to show you the colours. That's right, I'll show you in a minute. I wonder if I can tip the other way. Oh, I don't know if I can because I'd have to do it left handed. No, I can't. I just can't get around to the back of the table. I'll just have to do it here. Oh, that's a pretty one. The orange. That was the one where I had the red and the orange together, wasn't it? I didn't have black between them. If I'd leave the cup on the edge there for a bit, that might help empty it. Now I've got a tiny little bit of paint left. I do want to put a bit of extra here. I don't necessarily want to take it all the way up though. Just gently put it there and fill in that gap. Oh, that's looking nice. Quite like that. Now there's a little bit of paint left and I'm going to put it here, run the first bit off the table because the first little bit that comes out is, oh, how can I explain it, it sort of comes out in a circle whereas if I run that bit off first then I can start with my lines. Tiny little bit left. Run the first bit off. And continue up. Okay, now I've made a little bit of a blob there. I need to get rid of that. Continue that line through. And there's, see that little circle there? That's going to give me grief later. Let's get rid of it. and this little white blob here as well. So as I've said before, if you see something you don't like at the beginning or you think that might grow into something not very attractive, get rid of it now. All right, let's torch very lightly from up high, round and round in circles, so we get a, a very general broad heat over the whole thing. You don't want to put the heat right in one section. Low. All right, here we go. Round and round in circles. And again, round and round. I'd rather go round a few times rather than too much heat in one area to begin with. Wait. Lots of cells coming up. A few caterpillars happening. Might have got it, let it get too hot. Now while that's sitting there, I'll show you my colours. So this is the warm red. And that's the cool red. You can see the difference. Put them away. And then I had a light green and a dark green. So this one's called green light and this one's called 
green deep. That's those and black and white. Nothing terribly interesting about those. Okay. Well, that really stands out, doesn't it? That bit there. I'm glad I put it in the middle. Lots of cells popping up. It's looking really beautiful, actually. These cells are going to stretch nicely, I think. Touch wood. Okay, let's do this. As always, turn it round. I prefer to go that way first with my bits that I've added on. Although these added on bits are quite beautiful, I must say. I'm still learning as I'm going, you know, pouring that first little bit off that's in the cup and then going through that continuously it gives me a nice striation there rather than pouring it on and I have like a circle and a bit of uh, not very attractive paint. So that's working so far for me. And I've got the black on my edges so I don't have to tilt too much that way. I do have to tilt a little bit that way though. So I'm going to do this in future. I'm going to do my sides in black or whatever contrasting colour just so that I don't have to tilt too much to the sides. I only have to tilt to the side there. And I probably could get away with not doing it, just adding a little bit more black. No, I don't have any more black. I'll pick up a little bit of that and just pop that there. As I'm stretching that way, this is all bending. What if I can just get my hand underneath and just push that paint over. But I have to watch what I'm doing on the other side as well. There it goes. That's enough. And back. I didn't want to push too much paint over. I can continue to move the paint around later but I didn't want all of this to move too much just to get that. You have to be really careful of doing that. All right, back to the center. Try and keep my lines a little bit straight before I head down towards you guys. Back and forth, zigzag, side to side, till it just goes over. Bring the weight of the paint back straight away so nothing else drips over. Ooh, how bright does that look? That green's popping. Popping, popping. Now, I wonder if I can straighten that. I'll flip this around and then see if I can maybe straighten that little area out here. That was that extra paint I put in. Loving this bit in the middle. Wow, it's a little focal point, isn't it? I'm glad I haven't got too much of that, that colour together. It's just enough, though, I think. Okay. Bring that back to the middle. Now this has got a bit of a curve in it. I'm going to see if I can bend that straight a little bit with my hand. Push that across like so. Okay, that's done that. Now this one moved across as well, so I'm going to push it back a little bit as well if I can. My hand under there and just push it back. I think this one was moving as well. Not too much though. And I don't think I'll go too much to the side. See what happens. That is black there, so I can leave that. Wouldn't mind stretching this out a little bit, but we'll see how we go. See how we go. I might not need to. Right. Zigzag up and down towards you. Get the paint moving. The weight of the paint helps it all come down. 
you really want it to come down together. See, this has already gone over, so I'm just going to help it over here. As I said, you really want the paint to move together, a nice little union. Working well together, you guys. Paint working well together. Still got quite a big area there that I need to cover. I'll move the paint that way. I might just have to just go straight down. It doesn't really want to. Doesn't want to just do that last little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to help it. No, that's not very attractive there, but I'll get rid of it. I just need the weight of it to help it move down. And it's over. Beautiful. Yay. Okay. What do we think? A little, little, little bit busy. Lots of cells. Probably only need to do two drops in each cup because I've got a lot of cups. Now, I need to open this up a bit. Watching very carefully all sides of the canvas while I'm doing this, trying to stretch this middle section out. Okay, I think that will do. See they've stretched out there, the cells have got bigger. I would like to stretch this bit here, but I'll have a quick go at it, but I don't know if I can stretch those out. No, see it's moving here. I'll have to leave it. I'll leave it. I'm happy with it. I'll risk the you risk messing it up if you fiddle too much. You're better off just leaving it alone. Says she tilting again. I'm just checking my composition, moving the paint around just a little bit here. Look at my mess. I know, it's not wasted paint. You have to have that extra paint to be able to move your um, it paint around the surface. Really need to make up some extra black. I think I will. I won't put that on there. Make up some extra black and do the sides later on off camera. Uh, but yeah, happy with that. So I'll just go around and fill in all my missing sides with black because I don't want to put them, put too much muddiness on the sides. I like the black contrast, so I'll leave that. It would be nice if I could open this up a little bit more, but I can't, so I'll just have to leave it. I'm gonna to torch a couple of areas just to get some cells up. Some little ones, maybe. We might get some little white ones popping through, which will be nice. So little white ones came through there. They'll take a while to come through. They're not going to go come up straight away. This is very dark here. Um, that was my red that I had black and red and then black. So that might not have been a, such a good choice to have the red sandwiched between two blacks because it is quite dark. But uh, that's okay. You can still see the cells in there. But it, as I said, it is quite dark. So I'm, I'm happy with it. I don't love it. 
but um, I am happy with it and I'm glad I didn't get too much mud. This here is my favourite, this bit here. I've got some white rings around the cells and these are here are really pretty as well. I've got a couple of caterpillars in here. Do you remember how tiny they were? And now because I've stretched them, they're huge. So again, if you see something you don't like, get rid of it while you can. Um, I didn't want to upset too much of my paw with um, sticking my fingers where the caterpillars were, so that's why I left them. I wonder if I can just, I really want to stretch this section out here, this bit. It is moving. It's getting there, look at the corner, it's getting towards the corner. Mm, I'll watch the other corners as well though, don't I? Down here. Okay, now that was pretty good. It's moved a bit. Stretch them over a touch. So that's good. Alright, I'll leave it there. Take you in for a, a quick close-up. I don't know how Christmassy it is. a little bit darker than what I had expected it to be but there you go reds and greens um, maybe too much black I had two blacks I think if I was doing it again I would just cut that down to one black yes and I think the the red maybe would come through a little bit more so there you go maybe swap one of the blacks with a white have two whites I had two whites, didn't I? Take one black out, put an extra white in. Okay, I'll have to try it again. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Have a go with these colours. Pop them up on the um, Australian Acrylic Pouring Group on Facebook so we can have a look at your Christmas pours. And um, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.